Hi, morning, everyone. It's so great to see so many of you here. Thank you for joining our first ever Coffee Break CDP FAQ session. We're live here in the UK. My name is Dot, and I'm the marketing manager at EMEA and India at Treasure Data. Today, I also have Neil Brookman here, and he is our director of solution engineering. Um, just a few housekeeping items before we start. As this is a live session, please send us your questions along the way. And if we have time, we'll try to address them at the end. If we do run out of time, we will try to get back to you offline as soon as possible. So please send us anything along, um, um, well, throughout the presentation. And Neil, to you. Thanks, Doc. So hi, welcome everyone. Dot and I are very excited to host this session today to talk about most frequently asked questions on CDP. So back in February, we ran a CDP versus DMP webinar, and we received so many great questions during the webinar, but we just didn't have time to answer them. So what we've done is we've taken them away, we've grouped them into different categories, and we're now running FAQ sessions to address them. So today's session is pretty short, so I just want to dive straight in. But firstly, before doing that, I just want to do a little bit of scene setting and do a very quick overview of CDPs versus DMPs versus CRMs. People that didn't attend previous sessions, there's still a little bit of confusion. So a, a CDP creates detailed, identifiable customer profiles to help you improve your ad targeting, your personalization, segmentation, loyalty programs, and the entire customer journey across all channels. The CDP gets data from all channels as well to help you provide a single view of customer and help with constant communication across your touch points to help increase your customer experience. A DMP enables your marketers to serve targeted ads programmatically using anonymous customer data. And due to short retention periods and scale, they can handle lots and lots of, of massive scale of anonymous users. And your CRM typically manages interactions with customers and pr prospective customers, but it doesn't usually store every single piece of information on a customer or run machine learning on that data to generate insights. So all three tools have their own functions and all have use cases in the marketing ecosystem, but there can be a little bit of overlap. And all three have been designed to improve customer experience and user segmentation. But to simplify, a CRM is where your sales, service, or marketing teams typically manage customers, and they update data directly in the CRM. A DMP tracks third-party behavior, stores data for a short period of time, and helps with lookalike modeling and targeted ads, whereas your CDP pulls in data from all of your sources to create a single view of customer. It stores data as long as you need to. That includes first, second, third-party, and PII data, but you wouldn't typically update data directly in the CDP. It would be pulling data from other systems. So let's get over to some of the questions. Yeah, so how do we assess the compatibility of uh, CDP and DMP? Are there any ideal combinations out there? So most CDPs should work with any DMP. So you should be able to choose your DMP based on your requirements, and the CDP should work with it. You do need to ensure that your CDP can use the DMP identifier for its identity resolution. And then DMP data can be integrated into your CDP's single customer view. And most CDPs will allow for you to enrich your DMP data with data from other systems. So you need to ensure your CDP can integrate with the chosen DMP. The good thing with a best of breed CDP like Trezor Data is you can use it with a best of breed DMP and not have to choose a CDP and DMP from the same vendor, vendor as part of an integrated stack. Great, but what about the system that is trying to be both? So for me, the term jack of all trades, master of none comes to mind. If we have a look at uh, CDPs and DMPs, they all have their functions. And whereas a CDP can do some DMP functions, most DMPs will not compare to a CDP. DMPs are ideal for advertising and acquisition campaigns since they work best with new or anonymous audiences and join sessions based on third party cookies. Your DMP operates on massive audiences, which is why it has limited data retention but can help with your lookalike audiences and your programmatic advertising. 
your CDP is there to build a true customer view, uh, a single customer view, linking sessions based on first party data. It can manage customer experience across all channels and help to provide that consistent messaging and provide an exceptional customer experience. So as you can see from the table, there are differences in, in the two platforms, and that's why some tools are stating that they are combined, um, but if you dive under the covers, uh, very few are. They have their purposes, they're built in, and designed in a certain way. And can we leverage both CDP and DMP to understand prospects or customers in a better way? If yes, um, then what are the mechanisms to correlate CDB data and DMP data to create a holistic view of customers and prospects? So simple answer is yes. And again, you need to ensure your CDP can use the DMP identifier as part of identity resolution so that you can use that DMP data in your CDP single customer view. You can ingest your DMP data directly into your CDP to help improve segmentation and optimize the experience for those visitors across all channels. A good CDP will allow you to store your DMP data for as long as you need and allow you to store data in any structure. You can also push your CDP data back into your DMP to help improve the accuracy of your lookalike audiences. And once you have attracted that customer to your site, your CDP can take over, starting to provide that real-time personalization. So if we have a look at a, an example customer journey, your DMP will target lookalike audiences and help with retargeting. Then your CDP will take over the consideration stage right through to retention. And don't forget, your CDP can also enrich your DMP to improve your lookalike modeling and retargeting campaigns. And your CDP is getting data from all channels, and then pushing to DMP. So really joining the, the gaps between your call center, your CRM, your all of your internal systems, um, and your DMP to help enrich those user segments. Awesome. Is CDP, is CDP data integrated into a CRM or is CRM data integrated into a CDP? So simple answer again is both. You typically use your CRM to manage customer data and you work directly in the CRM. So you need to pull that data into your CDP as part of your single customer view as it's a very rich source of PII and behavioral data. But the CDP is also getting data from other systems and is running data science and machine learning algorithms on that data. So you are best to push some of this data back to the CRM to help enrich your CRM for your sales or service channels to utilize. This could be something like next best action, your customer lifetime value, propensity scores, or anything else that's valuable. And remember, it's utilizing data from all of your channels in the CDP and not a single channel. You do need to ensure that you have a master for each data attribute though. So if you are reading and writing the same attributes from the CRM, um, otherwise you could end up with some data integrity issues. So think of your CDP as the hub in your hub spoke model, ensuring data is read and sent across all of the systems in your ecosystem, including your CRM. And then what you need to do is define the master source for each attribute. So as I say, you're reading from a particular system and you're writing out to different attributes. So hopefully that's answered all of the questions that we couldn't answer from previously. Have we got any additional questions, Doc? Yeah, um, I'm just looking at the live chat now. Uh, we've got five, um, but there are two questions that are quite similar. So I am going to consolidate into one, but let me um, shoot off the first question. Can you process um, data real time for real time campaigns such as uh, any uh, session of personalization? Yes, you definitely can. So tools like Treasure Data can process behavior in real time and provide that decisioning across your channels. So channels like web, mobile, call center, your IoT devices and, and anything else. So this includes in session real time personalization to help provide next best action for each user and can help provide consistent messaging across your channels. 
And again, as I mentioned in the, the previous questions, Treasury data has data from all of your channels. So when you are doing your real-time decisioning, you're providing a better, more consistent user experience across all of your channels and also helping to uh, reduce spend. So as uh, uh, example, doing retargeting, if you can uh, suppress people in real time, you're not spending ad revenue on channels to target people that may have, uh, you have acquired across a, an offline channel. Right. Okay. That's cool. Um, and the, the second question is something that a lot of people do care about. And there's lots of people who's talking about the cookie world out there. So the question is, do you see the CDP as a solution for the cookie world? If yes, how do you position it? So third party cookies are going away, as I think most people are aware, and it's going to provide a challenge for a lot of DMPs as you're not going to be able to stitch sessions together and see a few uh, a user's full journey across time. A CDP like Treasure Data helps you match data on any attributes. So you can start to build a single customer view without relying on third party cookies. So this could be joining sessions based on a logged in person's user ID, their email address, or a first party cookie that doesn't have the same restrictions as a third party cookie. So a CDP is collecting first party data and that's data that you own. And you can even store consent for things like GDPR or CCPA within the CDP and then ensuring that that data is only used for the purpose that the user has given consent. So we're actually providing a, an increased security with a CDP. So not just the uh, demise of third party cookies, but making sure that we're using consent across the, the user's entire journey when we're doing that, that outbound communication as well. That's great, that's actually brilliant. Um, the third question um, is a pretty interesting one. Do you activate these campaign via CDP or do you work with an activation partner? So if you're looking at a, an enterprise grade CDP like Treasure Data, it will always activate via your existing tools and not provide a, an all-in-one solution. So your marketing team, they're very used to working with activation tools. And most of the time, these tools have been chosen because they are industry leading with key functionality. So this is why a CDP should orchestrate across your activation channels and help to determine which channel to use, which message and when to send it. But your marketing team will build templates and manage content in the activation channels as they do currently. And they don't need to learn a new, mm. potentially inferior tool to do that activation. Right. OK. Um, and there is the final questions. Um, it's more about the B2B. So how important is CDP in the B2B world today? And the, question, uh, the second question that is very similar to this one is, is the CDP rather a B2C platform for mass data or also already strongly used for B2B, um, where CRM systems usually are the core? So a lot of people think of CDPs as B2C and mainly because it has the word customer in them. It's a customer data platform, but they are also very valuable for a B2B. So a CDP like Treasure Data can help group users into companies, into functions. It could be business units, you can also get data from tools like LinkedIn. So you've suddenly got company and uh, job title and can then provide insights and intelligence to help with decisioning. So it can also be used to ensure that you're messaging at the right people at the right time. And as an example, it could be a, a B2B SaaS company that has planned downtime. Rather than putting a message in the application for everybody to see, which could be uh, perceived as negative, just show it, show it to the users that are going to be affected. So people in a particular segment that are on the actual device that's going down for maintenance, or start putting people into an upsell campaign or a journey to target cross-channel if they're on a certain plan and you want to look to uh, get them to, to upsell and they may be starting to exceed limits. So from a, a B2B, just in the same way as CDPs are used for B2C, pulling data, building that single view of customer, but again, a customer could become a business or a business unit and treating them in a certain way. So helping to enrich the CRM and pulling data from all of your uh, digital channels and online channels as well. 
Great. Well, thank you very much for the answers. Um, there's one more question that came in uh, literally just now. What are the typical sources which feed data into a DMP and does it stitch data from different systems to avoid duplicate advertising efforts? So uh, DMPs are, are typically pulling data from a digital channel. So it's, it's dropping a third party cookie and starting to uh, collect behavior from digital channels. It's uh, getting data itself directly from those digital channels, but with DMPs, the um, ability to, to not be able to store PII due to security risks. So it's all anonymous data. So uh, it's tricky because you're looking at effectively lookalike modeling with a DMP, then uh, you could have duplicate advertising efforts because it hasn't got the notion of a, a particular user. And that's where a, a CDP comes in because a, a CDP can get that DMP data, but also uh, get conversion from anonymous to known and make sure that your known users are targeted in the right way. So if somebody does make a purchase, you're not advertising a, a product that they've purchased on a, a different channel. Right. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. And we've literally just got another question um, came in as well. How do a CDP and master data management work together? Can we answer that today, Neil? Yes, of course. And so your um, MDM solution is is there to uh, as, as effectively as like a data lake. So it's bringing everything in, and it has data for certain things. So a, a CDP, uh, the term CDP is fairly generic, and there are different types of CDP. But a, a lot of CDPs are, are there for marketing purposes. So your MDM is storing everything, as, as I say, as part of a data lake. But your CDP is, is utilizing data that would help, <coughs> excuse me, help you to have better marketing, better outbound communication, and allows your marketers to do their job. So what you wouldn't want to do potentially is put everything from your MDM or replace your MDM with a CDP, because then your marketers have got too much data to be able to know how to do audience building correctly. What you would do is have your MDM integrated as a source with everything else, but then only expose the data that your marketers or your internal teams would utilize from the MDM. So it could be behavioral data, uh, depending on the vertical, it could be lots and lots of data that's assigned to a user. Uh, but again, put in a format that your marketers and internal teams can utilize to, to have effective communication. Great, I see. Well, these are, uh, I think that's about all the questions that we've got for now. Um, and we're coming up on time as well. Well, thank you very much for all your questions today. Um, we're limited on time. We do have to wrap up here now. Um, for those whom we have not been able to answer the question, we'll get back to you shortly. So please still send us any questions and um, on the screen right now. Um, please feel free to send your questions to uh, dorothy.chong at treasuredata.com. And uh, next week, we are going to talk about identity resolution, data and consent, which a lot of people do care about uh, these days. If you're interested, please sign, uh, please sign up below. You'll see a link. And thank you very much, Neil. Thank you so much for all your time. And um, have a good day and take care. Thanks, Stop. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.